Hi everybody. Uh, so this is a video I'm shooting about uh, how I resurface the uh, the floor of my cockpit. Just for your information, this is a 1995 Catalina C270 LE, and uh, I wanted the cockpit to be the original color. And you'll see throughout the video. And uh, and by the way, the video is going to be a whole bunch of sections that I uh, recorded yesterday. I'm going to put them in order so that you get a better idea of what the condition of the cockpit floor was. Um, how I, I fixed it and also how I'm going to resurface or repainted it uh, and what products I use and all that. So hopefully you find this video uh, useful and interesting. It was, uh, if you're thinking of doing it, it's a, it was an easy job. Preparation is everything as they say. And hopefully you'll find this video to be useful and then maybe uh, give you the courage to resurface your, uh, your video as well. Your, sorry, your cockpit floor. So I hope you enjoy the video. So today's big day, spring 2022. Uh, I'm not going to take the cover off today, although it's the first really nice day to people come to the club and start getting their boat ready to uh, put in the water. Uh, but this year, actually, I'm going to be fixing the surface of the cockpit uh, floor, as well as uh, fix some areas with some gel coat and then uh, resurface it or repaint it, I should say, with some interdeck uh, international uh, paint over the non-skid. So I'm going to record all of the stuff I do step by step and hopefully that'll help anybody else that needs to uh, refresh the surface of their uh, cockpit. Okay, so since it's going to be raining possibly tomorrow uh, and Sunday, what I did is I opened up the back of the tarp uh, so that I can access and lower the uh, lower the uh, ladder, the, the swim uh, ladder back and forth. And then... Uh, so now I can work on the floor, and if it does start to rain or whatever, uh, it'll be protected. So uh, my work is not going to be uh, all for nothing. So I'm going to show you a little bit of what I mean by the floor and the repairs I got to do. So if you look at the floor here, you'll see there's some actually these little potholes. These are like pinholes. Uh, and what that's caused by two things. Normally it's inside the gel coat. It's not a manufacturer's defect, but... Sometimes there's still little miniature air bubbles or air pockets just below the surface of the gel coat and uh, along with wear and tear over 27 years and sometimes little stones or debris underneath your feet or your shoes will exacerbate the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the effect and then caulk these little holes here. So I'm going to be filling these with, uh, with gel coat and you'll see I did these in the fall over here. So everywhere you see where there's a dark or a darker area that's actually not uh, dirt that's actually gel coat that I put in to fill in some of these whole pinholes and uh, I left the gel coat um, the same color I didn't bother tinting it to match because I wanted to be able to see now in the spring where I needed where I did those repairs so I can fine-tune those uh, sand them a little bit and make sure that the uh, I don't lose any of the integrity of the pattern and then uh, I'm gonna do the same thing in the back over here in the cockpit or the, the the pilot seat and you'll see there's a lot more here in those little holes so i'm going to be filling those in with gel coat in a minute and then um, and then we'll let that dry and cure and then we'll start preparing the surface to paint and then i'll uh, give you all those details as well okay so to clean up i use this uh clorox spray so it's not 100 percent uh, uh you know bleach or whatever but it's just a mix and i basically sprayed the whole surface and then i have this uh, dish brush here that i just can be able to really get into the grooves and go in both directions of the pattern so i really get into the deep uh crevices to get that clean and you can see the darker spots over here those are the ones i was talking about that's the gel coat that i fixed in the fall so and i didn't tint it so i'm able to see exactly where my repairs were so i can fine tune those grooves and sand them before i do a top coat Okay, so I just finished doing a, a first cleaning with a uh, Clorox bleach um, a spray cleaner. So, and the, that dish uh, brush, that little brush, so I can get into the grooves. And I just finished wiping it with my uh, lint-free towels. So now I'm going to look at each one of the repairs I did in the fall. So I can fine-tune those or uh, either chip them or sand them to make them nice uh, and even on the pattern. And then I'll put gel coat in the all those pinholes that you see there, all the black spots. Those are actually pinholes. So I'm going to fill those in with gel coat. Let that cure. Once I'm done, I'm going to clean the whole surface one more time. And then once I'm done that, I'm going to clean it one more time, but this time with acetone. Acetone only on the gel coat 
and I always tell it to people when you're using acetone, stay away from the windows. Uh, anything that's plastic or po uh, polycarbonate or plexiglass, you can't, you don't use acetone for that. So I always remind people of that. So I'm going to clean the surface with acetone to disinfect it, and then I'll be able to mix and uh, and mix my uh, my inter deck paint, and then uh, so that it matches the same gray as the rest of the uh, the original. And then uh, I'll show you how I'm going to do that. So to repair those little pinholes on the uh, cockpit floor, what I do have here is I have the gel coat, the gray, and the white gel coat directly from Catalina. Uh, but you can get gel coat pretty much at any uh, chandlery or boat supply store that has it, or look for your local shipwreck, uh, shipwright uh, repair guy, boat repair guy, and he'll he'll set you up. So like I said, the first pinholes, the re first repairs, I'm not going to tint them. I'm going to leave them the original gray, so it'll be a little bit darker, so that later on when they're cured, I'll be able to take a look and see exactly where my repairs were and see if I need to touch them up again. I want to look for them, uh, whatever. I will, however, match the color when I'm using the uh, the top uh, the top coating, which I'm not going to do with gel coat, obviously, but uh, with the interdeck. But I'll show you that later. So I do have mixing cups. What I do is uh, throughout the year, these are like applesauce uh, for lunches, kids' lunches or whatever. So I keep those and clean those. Those are perfect because the gel coat won't stick. Uh, you can actually make pucks. I have my liquid hardener and I have my syringe. My syringe I use to um, when I need to mix. So for now, I'm not going to mix. But if I need to do a, uh, I don't know, 20% mix, I can grab and use the, the, the scale over here to grab so much gray, so much white to be able to tint it and make it darker or lighter. And then I have, if it's if it was a deep repair or a more solid repair, I have the, uh, I don't know what this is called, but it's like a very, I'm not going to open it because it's uh, kind of windy right now. This is some sort of silica, whatever that you put into your gel coat to actually make it harder and uh, more resistant or whatever. In my case, uh, since I'm going gel coat, straight gel coat, I might add a little bit because I am going to fill out those pinholes. And I'm going to use these brushes here, disposable brushes that I got at the dollar store. Because that'll let that allow me to refocus in on those uh, on those pinholes and really, you know, get that in the hole at all uh, completely as much as I can. So now I prepared my uh, solution. As you can see, I don't need much because I'm going to use the brush over here, and then I'll be able to grab some of the gel coat and get it into that to these holes here, these pinholes, and cover as much as I can. And like I said, I didn't tint it, so it'll be darker than the original color here. But that's because I'll be able to see uh, where my repairs were and if I need to touch them up again before I do a top coat. So now, now I finish uh, touching up all the little pinholes, and uh, you can hardly tell uh, it's still a little bit tacky. So I'm going to give it about another hour, and then I'm going to go ahead and um, and clean it all up with acetone to make sure it's uh, make sure there's nothing wrong with it. And you can see where I have some some touch up. You can see that corner there. You probably saw in the earlier picture on this video that was full of pinholes. So you can see they've all been covered, and. Uh, over here as well there was a whole bunch over here so there you go here i am going to add a little bit more gel coat because you can see right there that there's a um, a little deeper gouge there so i'm going to fill that up even more and i think i missed that one no that, that one's just dirt so there you go for now and so i'm going to wait for that to to cure for about an hour or so even if it remains a little tacky i'll still be able to uh, to lightly scour it with a little sandpaper to create the adhesion and then I'll mix my uh, top coat and I'll show you what we're going to do with that. So here are the test panels that I use to uh, determine what color I'm going to use and also what application. So if I look over here, so I just finished doing the touch-ups with the gel coat and then over here is what that is. Is Over here is gel coat, gel coat and gel coat has a property that it remains sticky unless you actually add liquid wax in the gel coat which will come to the surface and then prevent air from touching the gel coat itself and then the gel coat would then uh, dry um, and hard without being sticky but without that wax gel coat always remains a little bit sticky uh, after a while and then this is actually the interdeck top coat on top of the uh, the gel coat completely and over here i have my mix so i have my interdeck mix with some bright side white this is my first coat and then I had uh, I waited about four hours and then did a second coat, but I wanted to change the color, so I went from 10 milliliters uh, and six milliliters of the white, uh, and it gave me that color. And over here is the same interlock uh, interdeck uh, coat, and uh, I gave it a bit more of the white, and I think that's the color I'm going to go for. Uh, that pretty much is going to be a close match. 
since I'm painting the whole uh, surface, it won't really matter because it's all going to match. Uh, but I do want it to keep a certain amount of color. So I'm probably going to be going with this one right over here. So I'll show you what that is. So if I do that, you see it's a little bit darker, but I have to remember this gel coat here is 27 years old. So these are my test panels. The other thing too is I used a chipboard that has actually a texture. So what I did is I tested the texture to make sure that using a foam roller that the texture comes through. So it was a very important because I, I want to keep the non-skid properties. So I want to make sure that whatever I paint, I still see this pattern here, uh, the non-skid pattern. So that was very important to me. So I see, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, uh, but this textured surface here and it's I can see it here There's two coats here right now And I see that it's actually three if we do the first coat over here And I can still see the texture come through so I have no concerns with a foam roller I'll be able to maintain that texture Okay, now that my gel coat is pretty much dry on the, the touch-ups I did in the cockpit This is what I'm gonna I'm gonna use and what you need to uh, Repaint the uh, that area or the cockpit table. So first of all get yourself a good pair of uh, disposable gloves because uh, working with that keeps your hands clean and it gives you a lot more dexterity. I have a full can of acetone to clean the surface of the gel coat. I do have a mixture of 50% water and alcohol. That's just to clean up things on the edges on the sides where I'm probably going to use masking tape. I do have a good quality masking tape. So I use frog tape. It's actually the one inch so I'll be able to go around corners uh, around the cockpit where I don't want to, to paint that product. I have a wider one as well to go around the uh, the steering column or the pedestal. And then I have my paint, which is um, Interlux Interdeck. I use the gray is what I'm using. I do have my inter uh, bright side as well, which is white. I'm going to be using this here because uh, I couldn't find a smaller can, but I'm going to be using this white to bring down this one and make it fade it down a little bit just to match uh, my, uh, my gray. So I'm going to use that to make what I did over here, which is, you know, a little bit uh, lighter color. So I'm going to use that to brighten that up. I have, of course, my mixing cups. I have my syringe so I can pull out what I need in the mix that I need with the degraded uh, uh, quantities. Mixing sticks, of course, uh, to, to mix all that up. And then I have my foam rollers and, of course, my roller. And I have a, a disposable paintbrush to go around edges or corners if I can't get in there with the roller uh, without making a mess. So this is everything that I'm going to be using uh, to go ahead and uh, paint my cockpit. Another good thing to have, by the way, is get the Interlux paint guide. I find this thing full of information on how to, a lot of steps, on how to fix uh, blisters, uh, uh, little pinholes, or even scratches. It's a great thing. I really like it. I think it's one of the better ones they've ever uh, published. I got it at my, uh, my chandelry, the boathouse in Montreal. But you can certainly uh, get it directly from International Paint uh, or possibly go online and get it. So yeah, so get yourself that guide. It's a great reading with a lot of tricks. Okay, now I finished uh, taping up everything. Uh, you got to really take your time. As they say in anything we do, preparation is 90% uh, of success. So it's around, going around these corners and all that. Uh, oh, I forgot to do this. I got to tape around there. So I finished taping the whole cockpit. So now I'm going to one more time pass the, the little broom, a little vacuum, and then uh, one more cleanup with the acetone to make sure there's no uh, contamination on the surfaces. And then I'll uh, prep my paint. Here's just another shot of uh, all the taping that was involved in uh, taping the cockpit before I paint it. So as you see, I got the pedestal completely covered as well. There you go. As well as the emergency tiller access. There you go. So now I just finished passing the vacuum. So now I'm going to clean it one more time with acetone and then I'll uh, get mixing my paint. Okay, I've mixed my uh, my paint now. It's exactly the color that I want it. You'll notice that I put this tape here. This is going to allow me to pour out the uh, the paint um, as I want and it won't get into the groove here and it'll keep the can nice and clean and stop from spillage. So that's just a little trick that I thought I'd share with you guys. But basically I'm ready to go up on board and uh, start painting. Okay, so now I've done the second coat and I'm going to let that dry. Uh, actually, I'm just going to head home in a couple of minutes. I'm going to come back tomorrow uh, and, um, and remove the tape. It's supposed to rain tomorrow, so I'm hoping it won't rain for at least the next eh, about four hours or so. 
because then it won't matter if it rains on this set and the top it'll be cured enough so there's two coats of the interdeck um, with a foam roller and you know you you foam and you can see the texture is still there so using the foam roller I would go in the same direction back and forth as the um, on the diagonal I should say of the uh, of the pattern so when that's going to cure um, everything's going to be really nice and smooth I'm really happy with the color it comes damn close to being the original color actually so I'm very happy with that okay so just arrived and it rained all night so this this was I had a chance to dry yesterday uh, afternoon before we had uh, rain we had lots of rain last night and huge winds so uh, and basically um, I'm really happy. Uh, it looks it looks good. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is uh, unmask it, dry it, and everything. And then once it's dry, um, I, all I need to do now is wax the surface to uh, to protect it against the UV rays and whatnot. So I'll be doing that. So uh, as soon as I got all this unmasked, I'll shoot another video. So that's the finished result uh, of the uh, resurfacing or repainting, I should say, of the uh, of my Catalina's cockpit. So I'm really, really pleased with it. I can see the uh, the pattern is uh, the integrity. Of the pattern was was, you know, was kept. the skid proof. So uh, all I need to do now is uh, simply when I, when it's a little warmer, because right now it's very cold this morning, is uh, go ahead and put a a nice coat of wax on top of this uh, and uh, to protect it. So I'm very, very pleased with this job. Basically, it took me. A day and a half to get this done so if you're wondering about doing it or uh, if it should you know if you want to do it it's, it was an easy job to do with the right products and of course the right preparation